Hello, folks. We are live for Wild Card Wednesday, and we have from from Massachusetts. We have JoJo. What's up, guys? And he's wearing a Boston Red Sox cap. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and you have what beer tonight? I have the. Uh... So guys, you got to excuse my bad pronunciation. Um, I'm not good with foreign pronunciations. Uh, this is the Westefaner Hefeweizenbier. Okay, Ryan, Ryan Stefaner Hefeweizenbier. Okay, yeah, from the oldest known brewing company. There's James. Right. It's a good thing my background is is proper is properly. Uh, appealing to the eyeball because you're alive already <laughs> right yeah i guess 1620 comes this all right so i am in louisiana and i have corona extra from mexico it's from Narva, Mexico. classic and, nice yeah 4.6 percent alcohol uh 18 international bitterness units and uh anyway it's a mexican beer I did a blind taste test with my friend David, and he had trouble guessing it. That was an interesting video. And so, what is your what is your ABV? Mine is uh, five point four percent alcohol by volume, fourteen okay. IBUs. Half a ice beer. Okay, that's a, a yeasty wheat beer. Now, James, you have what tonight? You said you had a special. Beer. The world's largest, loudest jingle bell. All right, I have, I got the information, but I'm not going to go on and give the information yet. But I have uh, a uh, dark, uh, well, red Belgian ale that is only made once per year from a Troeg called Mad Elf. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that beer, Trogues Mad Elf. Trogues, Trogues, like, like troglodyte, like a friggin' cave person. Trogues. <laughs> Anyway, Mad Elf. I like I like the demented clowns and then and, and and you know all these uh, Krampus and all this. And I thought the label was very appealing. And it has quite an interesting uh, uh, recipe that goes with it. Oh, has a nice aroma too. But uh, yeah, that's what I have. Um, um, let me see the I've general been, information. Been, Oh, yeah, 11% alcohol by volume. It says here 15 IBU. And uh, uh, it is it is made by the company mid-October through December only. And uh, Mad Elf Ale. Yeah, it's a dark uh, red Belgian ale. And, uh, and I'll save the rest for later. Okay. Wow. I've had the Troganator, the German Doppelbach, but we don't really get their beers down here. Now, we have Bumpy World Brewery, Jesse from uh, New Hampshire. And what does, uh, while you're talking, I'm going to step out because I want to go get a different glass. So what do you have tonight? All right. I am uh, bringing the Samuel Smith's Old Brewery Tadcaster. Oh, I love that. Pure brewed love organic lager. I love Samuel Smith. It comes in at uh, yeah five percent ABV and uh, it says that it is uh, brewed only from the purest ingredients: organic malted barley, organic hops, yeast, and water. From um, Merry Olding, pretty yep. fashionable, I assume. That their their porters or what did I have last time? Samuel Smith was last year. Samuel Smith uh, holiday porter or or stout that had chocolate in it and all kinds of cinnamon and all yeah. kinds of great ingredients coffee i think yeah it was uh samuel smith uh they make they make pretty good products there he is so oh, uh, i'm gonna step off it's a, new, it's a new england night tonight looks like we have from <laughs> massachusetts oh, you're right. we're outnumbered i know we have uh eric and from thomas uh <laughs> Massachusetts Beer Reviews, Thomas Metal 75. What do you have? That is I. Hello, everybody. This is a uh, Best Buy 3620, packaged 11719. It's called Double Dry Hop Light Speed Pale Ale from Toppling Goliath Brewing Company. Wow, another one we can't get in Louisiana 
Yeah, I think they distribute to maybe like about 15 different states in the United States. This is 6.2% and 50 IBUs. What state is it brewed in? Eric? It's brewed in Decorah, Iowa. Okay. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to start off. I'm in Louisiana. I'm going to start opening up this Corona Extra. I bought this at um, Walmart. Uh, four point six, like I said, um, it's a mac. It's a mass-produced beer. I'm not drinking it just to get drunk. Um, <laughs> I like macro beers because uh, they're cheap. There's a little skunk in the nose, but it's not too bad. So I'm pouring it. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, sloshed a little bit. And I'm gonna put myself on the um, spotlight. And look at the glass I have. Oh, oh look, I got one too now. Where'd you find it? Dollar Tree. Ah, like it. Really? Right mine. So it's not—it's nice not uh, real crystal. No, it's thick. I mean, it, it, for a buck, I got the same glass. It's real thick glass. It's great. You can put it in the fridge. Yeah, I, yeah I've got—I got, got some twenty-five dollar wine glasses that look just like that. <laughs> yeah. It's a good deal because it uh James, I saw it and I said, Oh, I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna surprise James P. Madonna with this glass. <laughs> yeah, but it's a humdinger of a of a of a glass, you gotta admit, for a dollar. It is now this beer, right, Ronald. This beer has no it is a good deal for a dollar. Hopefully it, it's uh it's safe to drink, you know, because it is from China. All right, but um so um well, you get the typical Mexican um, aroma, which is that kind of Mexican corn maize, or like my friend David was saying. There was a little skunkiness, but it dissipated so quickly. It's no, really nothing to talk about. Uh, in a narrow or a brim glass, you might have some foam. There's very thin, a very thin head of foam here. It's clear straw appearance right like like literally straw now um or hay maybe it's, it's something like that all right so um mild flavor got your barley your corn some little hot bitterness there because it is 18 ibus most american macro beers are about 12 10 to 12 so 18 get a little uh pilsner like Lower, lower level or tamped down Pilsner bitterness, uh, kind of like um, medium body, crisp, clean finish. It would go so well with steak fajitas or um, just tacos, hard taco or soft tacos with hard tacos with ground meat, shredded lettuce, cheese, a little sour cream, maybe diced tomatoes. Uh, Chips and guacamole, all these types of things. That, that, that's your ultimate pairing beer. Might go well with some char broiled oysters and uh, maybe a seafood platter like fried catfish, some some uh, stuffed crab. Hush puppies, too. Hush puppies, shrimp. Corn, corn. Corn, corn bread, maybe. Okay, well, enough of that because I can go on all night. All right, so now we're going to go. Uh, Jojo was the second one on, so we'll go in that order. We'll just try to be equitable. So there's Jojo. Somebody's got a little echo going, so it might try to fix that. So anyway, might have your volume up. All right, guys. Have the Weiss and Stefaner Hef Weiss beer. So apparently this was first brewed in 1040. They Now, the brewing company, West um, Weston Stefaner, they say they are the oldest brewer, although that's disputed by a few different breweries. They actually have a brewery a couple towns away, I think, um, called, what is it? Walton, um, something. Oh yeah, Waltonburg Brewery, which yeah, Waltonburg, yeah. yeah, which was started I guess ten years after that. But they also dispute the fact that West Stefaner is the oldest one. So it's got a little controversy who the who and who the oldest uh, brewery is. But anyways, um, it's yeah. Now, now, hold on. Let me interrupt real quick. Now the Vi Vian Stefaner, the Vian Stefan Brewery, brewery, they. They have records going back to 1040 that they can verify. Mm -hmm. They know that they were there before that. 
And that particular brand may not be from 1040, but they have been have, having brewing operations going on at the Vahen Stefan Brewery since 1040 during the days of the Holy Roman Empire <laughs> of the German nation, the First Reich, in other words, First Empire Nation. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt, go. No, it's okay. So it also says on the bottle, it's brewed under the purity law of 1516, which I think means that, so it's not brewed with water, or it's brewed with water, barley malt, hops and yeast, but not corn and rice. And I may or may not have learned that from Jay Therio's review of the spirit several years back. Oh, Spoiler, thank you. I did yes, learn from Jay Therio. <laughs> no corn or rice, no adjuncts, just water, barley malt, hops and yeast. And they yeah. can have wheat. They can have wheat. It, it's kind of... Um, it wasn't really done. The law wasn't really passed to make pure beer. It was passed because they didn't want the brewers using bread products. They wanted those things used for food, and they wanted the other stuff used for beer. So it's, it was, but now, of course, it's the German mystique and all of that. What's nothing wrong with it? Now, John and Neely, real fast before we go back to JoJo, what do you have tonight? I have got one here from Boulevard Brewing Company out of Kansas City, Missouri. This is the Plaid Habit. Ooh. It is a Canadian whiskey barrel aged imperial brown ale, a limited release for 2019. Damn. And it clocks in at 12.5% alcohol, Ooh. 13 IV. Oh. I have a friend. I've never had a Canadian barrel aged beer before so this is a first very excited that is a great one and ron it's a damn shame you can't get boulevard in louisiana because they make some awesome beer it is sickening you know um i have a friend in new orleans who has a plaid habit because he always wears plaid i mean he is like <laughs> this man is something else all right so hey cap you ought to be joining us cap all right, uh, so I'm going to go back to JoJo and highlight him, and then he's going to finish describing his beer because we keep interrupting him, and that's wrong. All right. It's okay. Uh, it also gets a 98 um, out of 100 on Beer Advocate, so very high score. I've had it in the past, but it's been a while. Um, so going in for the pour here. So um, there is a lot of carbonation here, if you can kind of see that. Um, a lot of head here. So kind of a yellowish, or uh, I'd say like an amber color. I'm smelling a lot of spice right off the bat, a lot of banana, a lot of banana. Um, coriander, you know, clove, I'm getting bubble gum too. Smells very pleasant though, definitely getting the spice. So going in for the taste. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, it's really, really pleasant. It's uh, getting the banana, a lot, a lot of banana here, a lot of spice, bubble gum, maybe a little bit of lemon zest, not a lot. This is the faintest hop uh, taste, not a lot though. It's very it uh, it's sweet, not overwhelmingly sweet though. And I'm getting that bubble gum, very good though. Like I said, a little bit of honey too but I'm enjoying it so far and I'll give you guys a score in a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I've had that beer and um, I'm not- yeah, We've the original taste too. They're an acquired taste, but I enjoy them. Is that the original, Joe? I, I didn't see, it, or is that one of the- I think so. It's the uh, the Weiss beer, Heffy Weiss beer by Weston. Heffy Weiss. Yeah. So okay. We're um. Actually, I'm not sure if that's the original. The original doesn't it actually say original on the label? The original. Yeah, the original is more of I think it's the original lager. I mean, they're I, all I, yeah. I, okay. I'd have to. I'd have to look at their website. I, I've had that one, but I'm pretty sure there's actually one that says why 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 Stefaner, and it just says original on it, which is one of their regular lagers. That one is a uh, okay. Yeah, this one doesn't say original on it. Just says yeah, honestly, you know, they're all they all taste. It's almost like they it's the same base beer for all of them, and yeah. the ABVs are pretty much what differ. Like the uh, the Vitus is like seven something percent, and they have like the uh, you know a couple other ones that are higher or lower ABVs. I think the original actually is the lowest of the ABV. Oh, is it really? Okay. Hello, Jim. yeah. I'm not really anyway, sure. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. I just uh, 
Well, I, I, I've always enjoyed their beers. I've had a, a lot of them, but there's there's so many. It's hard to hard sure to keep exactly. Track. <laughs> That's a lot, right? Yeah, honestly, I don't know, and uh, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert at everything. That's for sure. I'm, I don't claim to be an expert at anything, no matter what people like. Say, all right, but uh, James Tunan is going to present the Trogues beer, the Mad Elf, which is going to be interesting. Ooh. Um, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. Only made this time of year. Dark, a dark ruby red uh, Belgian ale, Mad Elf. There you go. It's, it's a, uh, and um, I poured it. I haven't, haven't had it yet. So uh, I just read a little bit of information. As you can see, it is dark ruby red. Um, Eleven percent alcohol by volume. Fifteen uh, IBU. The malt is, says here chocolate, Munich, and Pilsner hops. It says ho holler. Taw and Saz or Sayaz. Uh, the yeast, it says uh, spicy Belgian, color ruby, ruby red. Um, it is uh, flavored with uh, ripened cherries, raw honey, and cocoa with notes of cinnamon, clove, and allspice. Um, and um, that is, it's only, yeah, it's only made, uh, I think I, I read what was it mid mid October until Dece yeah mid October till December, and um, I'm going to smell it. Uh, I love I love the color because that's my favorite color. Yeah, I can definitely smell what I just mentioned before. Oh yeah, that that's definitely uh, what you would taste in a once per year holiday beer or ale or anything that's just made this time of year. Um, taste the cherries, I taste the chocolate, I taste the cinnamon. It's all there. Is it, is it very expensive? Um, it, was, it was a little over $10 for six. Oh, that's not too bad. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, but uh, I caught my eye because I, I wasn't able to get to the store for the holiday th beer theme, but it's technically still before Christmas. So um, I definitely, um, I definitely tomorrow, I'm going to stock up on eggnog. That's my project for tomorrow. But I like this quite a bit. I, I'm going to give it a score when we all are ready. But, okay. Uh, it's it's really all that it claims to be in terms of flavoring, and there's a close up of it, and uh, the mad yeah. elf. The I can elf. see. I can see those bubble streams. Yeah, the exactly. Okay, now off to uh, let's mad see. Elf. Bumpy Rogue came next, so right. yeah. So. Uh, since you grabbed your nice crystal glass, I uh, grabbed mine. This is a $25 version of the ah, same yeah, type right. of glass you have. Uh, Austrian crystal, probably. That's right. It was bing, bing, so bing, bing, bing. I got the uh, Samuel Smith's uh, Old Brewery Tadcaster uh, organic lager. So um, John and Ellie didn't think I was going to go organic tonight, and I know that Eric was uh, guessing I was going to have uh, organic peak or something like that, peak organic. So Yeah, yeah, I saw that comment. <laughs> on top of both of you. That's a good logger right there. I like that one a lot. Me too, yeah. Never and, seen uh, the can, though. That's cool. It's, yeah, a, can. it's a um, $10.99 for a four-pack of this where, I, where I'm at. Uh, they're 14.9 fluid ounce cans, uh, but it does pour – with a nice uh, white head on it, tight bubbles, very uh, clear. You got that nice straw to uh, kind of going into a pale gold type color. But <sighs> as you can see, it is clear. Is he boring you people? What's going on? Am I boring? No. <laughs> no. I've just been up since 2 o'clock, so. Yeah, I mean, you're getting the, uh, there you there's go. no there's no adjuncts in this. You're getting all the, all the grain. There's some... Uh, 
nice maltiness to it, uh, kind of on the uh, like kind of cracker to hay, maybe a little bit of like a wheat note actually in there too. A lot of fruity notes coming up. A little bit of an herbalness. Smells like a nice non-adjunct lager. So, gonna go in for the first swig. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Flavor is pretty much the same um, with the malt characters in the nose, getting the uh, kind of cracker, wheat type notes out of it. Uh, another biscuit man. Gotta love him. A little bit of a fruity character. I don't know if that's uh, possibly coming from the yeast. It is a lager, so it should be pretty clear, clean, but um, some fruity and, and herbal type notes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say the, the herbalness is probably more from the hops. Um, this one's not super like, it's got like a, a clean, crisp type flavor, but it doesn't have like a drying body to it. Yeah. Probably like closer to like a medium, a medium body. Um, the carbonation level on it's not even like super high. It's not very fizzy. Um, kind of a, that medium to high medium range in carbonation. And I will leave it at that. We'll jump on to the next soul. Okay, now to. The Massachusetts Beer Reviews. Damn. Hello, people of hey. YouTube. I was just telling uh, David Webb what I was drinking, but now you're going to see it live. Uh, we got double, I think it's called light, what did I say? Light speed, a double dry hop light speed pale ale from Toppling Goliath. I didn't even spell the word toppling right. Holy crap. Uh, 6.2% alcohol, and this is 50 IBUs. They come, toppling the life, out of uh, Cora, Iowa. This was canned on 11, 7, best buy, all the way to the 6th of uh, March, 2020. In a tech glass, here is the look you get. You get a uh, typical New England-style pale ale and IPA look to it. But from Iowa, pretty interesting. Nice color to that. It's kind of orangey in, in my light. A little bit more yellow, hazy in the camera light. Um, and some nice white head there. Uh, the smell, the smell is very, smells very grapefruit, very, well, very um, orange. That's the one. There's a sweet bready malt. There's a little bit of a bubblegummy kind of yeast or like a white wheat malt in there because I believe they are, I think they're using, they got to be using some amount of, white wheat malt to get that kind of an aroma i would think or toast or uh, flaked oats maybe uh, white bread underneath so it smells like a really good uh a new england style pale ale without being too alcoholic since it's 60 or uh yeah 6.2 percent alcohol cheers 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 as you are so what i'm getting on the flavor is maybe 60 a percent or maybe even 70 percent of it's very orangey up front and then the between 30 to maybe 40 percent is, is i'm getting really good lemon drop or lemony kind of notes in there very vibrant and herbaceous if that makes any sense from the hops um it's got a nice peppery spice from the yeast i am getting some of that bubble gummy note but it's pretty It's pretty dry for the most part, not bone dry. You're getting nice malty uh, white bready notes to it. Pretty, and there's a nice sweetness underneath to round everything out. Um, it just, I don't know, I don't know what else to say about this one. This one is, in, at least in its flavor profile, it is a very light, easy drinking session. Here, you would not think it's 50 IBUs, but it does have a really good green herbaceous ripeness to the hops right now with that lemon. And orange, maybe some grapefruit, some pineapple. So it's really fresh right now, not really cutting my head off too much. A little bit of oils, tiny bit of stickiness from the hops and tiny bit of resin, not a whole bunch. 
I would say it's on the light side of medium, crisp, very clean for the most part, extremely, extremely refreshing. If, I, I think there's maybe only 15 states. If you went on uh, this Toppling Goliath website, this is where they actually distribute. I think there's maybe a grand total of 15 different states that can get these beers. So if you really do like New England IPAs or you're more of a, a hop fan or New England style beer fan, this brand is one to get. And so far, this one is not disappointing, folks. Pretty awesome. Hey, Sammy. All right. Now we have this monster beer. All right. Yes. So the Plat Habit from Boulevard Brewing Company out of Kansas City, Missouri. 12.5%, 13.5% IBUs, Canadian whiskey, barrel aged brown ale. It is brown, very dark brown when you hold it up to the light. It did pour with about a two finger head, but I poured it straight down the glass to generate that head because otherwise it wouldn't have poured with anything. Um, there is some nice lacing left behind. I've had a few sips of it. Um, the aroma, caramel, 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 whiskey. If you told me, if you didn't tell me this was barrel aged, I'd, I'd be able to tell immediately from the aroma. It's definitely got that barrel presence on the aroma. What I wouldn't be able to tell you is that it was Canadian whiskey barrel aged. It just, it smells like it's been aged in whiskey barrels. I yeah. would have guessed bourbon because that's generally what they're aged in. Yeah. Um, but Canadian whiskey is very interesting. But it just, it, it, you know, you're getting the, the wood notes, the, the alcohol from that as well. Nice caramel notes, some bready notes. It smells really, really good. You do pick up, you don't really pick up on the alcohol, but you pick up on the barrel, and you know that it's gonna that you know that it's a stronger beer just from the aroma. So, cheers, 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 cheers. Slangevar, Prost, cheers, Skull. Skull. amazing, uh, caramel. Toasted bread notes, nice malt forward presentation, 13 IBUs. You're not getting any bitterness with this uh, start to finish. The body is medium to almost heavy. The barrel presence is coming through quite nicely. You're getting a little bit of vanilla, definitely the oak. Um, like I said, if you didn't tell me, I would just guess that this was a bourbon barrel-aged beer. Nothing about this screams Canadian whiskey, but it definitely does have that whiskey presence uh, on the palate. The finish is very smooth, very clean. The alcohol is there. It's not super boozy, but you can definitely tell that this is a higher alcohol beer. Uh, and if you're into, if you like whiskey, whether it be Canadian, bourbon, scotch, whatever, and you like brown ales, you're probably going to like this beer because it's a nicely balanced beer. You're getting the malt character from the from the malt that they're using. You're getting some nice caramel toffee notes. You're getting the breadiness in the middle of the sip. And then that barrel presence is just coming through very strong on the in the middle and on the back end no hop bitterness though so if you want a little bit of balance with some hops you're not going to get that with this um honestly they could have hopped this up a little bit more maybe increase the ibus to like 30 or 40 because it is so malty and the alcohol on top of that with the barrel aging i mean it's it, they could have done a bit a better job of masking the alcohol if they probably if they hopped it a little bit more but that being said i think they were really going for that so for what they're going for, which is a brown forward, a malty, a malt forward beer with a very significant barrel presence, I think they did an excellent job. And even though this does have some alcohol presence, it doesn't taste like it's twelve and a half percent. That's getting up there, and this maybe tastes like an eight or nine percent. So it, I think it, it's a good beer uh, at the very least. It's probably a little bit better than that. We'll see when you come back around. But I'll keep sipping on it. I'm definitely very pleased with this. If you're into barrel-aged beers, Boulevard is among the best companies to do it, in my opinion. So if you can buy, if you can find uh, Boulevard beers in your area and you like barrel-aged stuff, I, I don't think you can go wrong with any of their product. Is it, uh, is it very expensive? It was $12.99 for the four-pack which is not, not super cheap, but for a barrel-aged beer with 12.5% alcohol, I think that's a dynamite deal. Say, say that again. It was twelve ninety nine for the four-pack. Okay, all right. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you... 12.5% uh, 
Earl Lane Spear. So, I mean, you got to – I don't know. I think that's a good deal for, for what you're getting with this. I'm glad that you, you said the alcohol percentage again because uh, I'm not sure if it was your internet connection or if it was my end. Um, I thought you said it was 4.5% and you started talking about the high ABV. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Okay, continue. Okay, doke. Well, <laughs> this uh, Corona Extra is almost gone because you know how drinkable that is. You could just guzzle it down like water with no problem. And that's the end of that. Ta da! It's like magic. I made it disappear. And I do that magic trick every day. Um, every day. Whoa. Every day, Eric. But Every look, day. let me uh, clear something up with you. I started drinking beer in February 1996, and I can guarantee you there's been at least four, uh, maybe three days that I have not drank beer since Ooh. February 96. So don't pin me down as some kind of habit, habitual drinker. <laughs> like I said, I've skipped three or maybe even four days since I started 23 years ago. So, ha, ha, yeah. boom. Bam. Yeah, that's when I started too. You know, my dad would give me a sip or two of Budweiser. So, hey, and I used to do that with Miller High Life and Flitz and Dixie Beer back in 1970 when I was two. I'd say, give me some, give me some. They'd let me sip it. <laughs> I yeah, but even people in the old country gave their kids booze just to shut them up, which is a very smart idea. <laughs> yeah, they did, they did it. I, I don't think they did it to shut me up. They they just did it to be nice. But uh, Ooh. but um, it, it was very nice. It was very nice. But um, I'm gonna score it an A, ninety three out of a hundred. It's we don't have our record keeper here tonight. We don't have our scribe because uh, well. Unfortunately, James P. James P. Uh, I mean, Michael Komarov's Michael Komarov's mother died last week. She was ninety-three. Oh wow, ninety-four. Oh, oh women, yeah. women live a, to a ripe old age compared to men. Anyway, they kill us off early. <laughs> well, I, I say we have a uh, a moment of silence actually for uh, Michael Komarov's mother. To describe Michael Komarov's mom. Yeah, take care, Michael. We we've been thinking about you. We sorry about what we happened. Miss you, man. Definitely. Huh? We miss you, I said we miss you, Michael. That's all. We oh, do yeah. miss Michael. Yeah, he's he's always a good part of the show. Condolences to Michael's mom. Okay, so now on to JoJo. He's going to give us a score. All right, guys. So. Definitely enjoying this beer. Very smooth. It's also very sessionable. I love, I'm a big fan of wheat beers. This is really good. It's a high score on beer advocate. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to give it a 98. Um, yeah, it's very, very good. Very pleasant. I'm really digging the spices. I like the, the banana flavor. Um, in my opinion, I've had a decent amount of wheat beers. The only one that kind of rivals this, I would say, would be the beer I reviewed a couple weeks ago, uh, Allagash White out of Maine. But oh, this yeah. is very, yeah, it's very good uh, style. Um, uh, wheat beer, whip beer, whatever you want to call it, but definitely a 98. It's a high A, a plus. So I definitely recommend it. 98. Hard to beat 98. Now, James, what are you going to give yours? You said James. Yes, James P. Madonna. Okay. Um, well, I, it wouldn't be fair to compare it to my number one holiday beverage, which was the Samuel Smith's, I believe, stout that had like cinnamon and chocolate and coffee. In it. I mean, that was my all-time favorite. But because the cherry is a little strong, I like it. Don't get me wrong. Because the cherry is a little overpowering, and I'm, I'm not a fan of cherry, I would give it, as far as holiday ales, a 97% out of 100. Hmm. Well, that's, and that's, that's, certainly, that's certainly no low score. That's a top-notch score yeah. there, boy. Of course, I love the demented elf. Yeah. <laughs> Drunk elf. 
the drunken demented with the sharp <laughs> drunken and demented that's like the clowns you know like the evil clown and demented d and d d and d i almost picked it up the other day james i think i'm going to looks really good all right bumpy road is going to give us his score out of a hundred so i would say for the samuel smith um with their organic lager anybody coming from uh, like an American adjunct lager field, if that's what you drink, the Budweiser's, Miller's, the Coors. Uh, oh, yeah. I think that this is a beer that you can definitely get into and you're going to love it. You're absolutely going to love it. It has uh, much more flavor, uh, more malt forward, and uh, I don't think you'll miss that rice or corn at all. Um, but as far as like uh, other other beers that do not use adjuncts, as like the, uh, the Germanic style lagers, oh. The Czech Pilsners and stuff like that as well. Um, this one is just not as good as those. This one's this one's a, a bit better than like a, a Mexican cerveza. You get some of the same type notes as you might find in like a um, a Tecate uh, type type beer, but it's a it's just a little notch above above those. I'm going to give this a ninety two out of 100. Nice. Oh, oh, what, what is it nice. again? All right. A 92 out of 100. It's the uh, same. Right. Right. Yeah. 92 still good, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's excellent. So, excellent. Hey, I have to revisit that beer. I need to revisit that beer. Folks, I need to revisit that beer. All right. <laughs> now, our heavy metal fellow. What's up, people? Oh, wait. What am I doing? I'm not highlighting right now. You are now. I'm uh, not now. See what happens when you wake up at two in the morning? You start to slip. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, no slippage. Stay on target. I, I, I'm talking about cognitively. No slippage. Uh, uh, yeah, we're drinking here in Massachusetts the double dry hop light speed pale ale from Toppling Goliath, 6.2%. And 50 of them are the IBU numbers. And this is damn delicious. If you want what feels like a lighter, sessionable version of your New England-style pale ales that has somewhat of a thin body, not too thin, but it is really crisp, clean, ultra-refreshing. It's got all the notes you want. It's got all of that fluffy texture that you pretty much want from that style, but just in a lighter body and package. This is the beer for you. Um, 94 is where I'm thinking at this beer. But, I mean, it's not any particular fault on the beer. You can go to their Pseudo Stew, which is their um, flagship IPA, if you want a little bit bigger body and heft out of a Toppling Goliath beer. But if you can get Toppling Goliath beers in your area, I would highly recommend that brand. I think that brand... And Collective Arts out of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, are two really good breweries that do the New England style hoppy beers very well. And they're both companies outside of New England. So if you can get them beers, do that. This one is mighty tasty and easy going. 94, people. Well, man, the worst score so far was a 92. That, that's <laughs> no joke. That's so serious. Uh -huh. that's Serious beers here tonight. <laughs> now, last but certainly not least, we have Georgia beer reviews from the Empire State of the South. Um, what are you going to score yours? All right. So the Plaid Habit Boulevard Brewing Company, twelve and a half percent Canadian whiskey barrel aged. Uh, it's it's an excellent beer. It's got a lot of malt character, a lot of barrel presence. Like, like I said before, I can't really tell the difference between the you know whether or not it's Canadian versus bourbon barrel aged. It just you can tell it's barrel aged. It is a brown ale. I would have liked maybe a little bit more body to support that high ABV. So a porter or a stout might have been a little bit better and, and bumped it up a few notches. But it's still an excellent beer, and I think it's a solid A. I'm going to go with a 95 out of 100. It's definitely an interesting beer. I like what they're doing with the Canadian whiskey barrel thing. I just uh, I wish I was getting, I wish I was able to tell a little bit more that that's what it was. 
uh, instead of just noting that it was a, a barrel-aged beer. But it's definitely worth checking out, as are all of the Boulevard barrel-aged beers from their barrel-aged series. Um, good, good stuff. Great stuff from them. Nice. Okay, so 95 out of 100, but could, could use more international bitterness units. A little bit more body. Not not bitterness necessarily, but more body. Like it, like if this was a stout, a Canadian barrel-aged stout, I think it would be a 97 or 98. I just don't think the brown ales support this type of alcohol and barrel aging. I think it needs a little bit more um from the malt and the you know the 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 body that you would get with a, a porter or a stout. Yeah. probably a stout like a, a, a for 12 and a half percent that's that's pretty damn high yeah okay so we 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 got a range for 92 to 98 tonight well that that's the range I love to be in and uh <laughs> just uh does anybody mind if I do a little prom promo for tomorrow morning mm -hmm. please go for it Good. I got to ask on my own channel all right, the, the stage is yours. Arr. Well, tomorrow morning for Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge, we have Clubhouse. I know it's there here, but Clubhouse uh, American Blended Whiskey. Well, I got to say, this thing was confusing me and disturbing me to no end. If some of y'all watch my video reviews, I was like, what is up with this thing? This thing makes no sense. This is a whiskey that makes no kind of sense. And I couldn't get over it. And then it just hit me. Like Colonel Kurt said, it hit me like a diamond bullet in the forehead. Damn. I realized, I said, oh, I know what they're doing. They're flavoring it with cocktail sherry because it says flavored with natural flavors. And I said, I think cocktail sherry so um i could be wrong of course i could be wrong but in my mind i think i'm right uh so now i have a better appreciation of it because it was just killing my sensibilities now the competitor tomorrow morning i don't have too much left do i no but tomorrow's competitor is triple crown Ooh. Okay. It, it won the triple crown of uh, well, nothing really. But anyway, uh, it's funny because if you get on their website, they claim we use the best bourbon in the world. They don't just say we use good bourbon, the best in the world. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Seems a little uh, overboard, but uh, <laughs> they don't. I only paid three ninety nine for that bottle. So uh, and imagine that the best bourbon in the world only three ninety nine. Bizarre. That's not bad. They must blend it. I'm sure they blend it with some Pappy Van Winkle or something. You know? <laughs> no, 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 they claim it's way better. Not garbage. You know. I have, anyway. a, I have a question for Ronald. Twenty Year Family Reserve. Yeah. Okay. What? Ron D. T. R. U. I have a question. Uh, being that uh, in Ireland and Scotland, oats are a very popular grain. Is there such thing as an oat whiskey? This I do not know, but in this world, in this day and age, it pro they probably have it. I mean, why not? Heck, right? And I, I would, as as a home brewer, I would probably say no because oats um, they don't give off a lot of uh, starches um, oh. to be converted to sugar. So you'd have to use a ton more oats to get to the same um, yeah that, starch, no, starch level that you need. You got to over. Play. Because oats are high in in uh, fats. Uh, essential fats and, and uh, oils, you know, and, and protein in comparison to barley and other grains. I I, I have to agree with yep. you. You're right. You're right, Pumpy. See, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, ig I'm ignorant, and I'll be the first to admit it. But, uh, no, I mean, you, you can definitely do it. They did that back in the day when they were brewing, like, brown ale, uh, browns or whatever the heck it was, milds and stuff like that in England. Um, they were using brown malt. But uh, the amount of uh, starches they were getting out of it, the conversion level was so much lower yeah. than yeah. than like it, using a pale a pale malt. It's lower on the glycemic index. It's lower in carbs than other grains. So therefore, yeah. because the yeast need in, in order for fermentation to take place, the yeast needs to feed on sugars on on carbohydrates. Mm. 
And therefore, you're right. You're making a scientific, uh, a very good point. Uh, but you know what's interesting? Uh, vodka. The wheat vodka is clear, made from wheat. But then again, the, the standard vodka is made from supposedly potatoes, right? Which is not a grain at all. Well, that, that, that's the Polish and the Russian vodka, yes, from p potatoes. Right. But they're both clear. You see, whether it be wheat, whether it be potatoes, mm -hmm. they're both clear. And I find it, it's interesting. But Bumpy Road made a very good scientific point, which, uh, which is uh, different from all the Nikampupa information we get on social media. Cheers to Bumpy Road. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd say it could definitely be done, though, James. Uh, it's just uh, it would uh, take, a, like I said, a ton of, <laughs> ton of votes. And, 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 a, and a brewery doing that would just be wasting so much money. So they usually try so to find the best. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be cost effective. Right. Yeah, be a, be a it might be good for like a, too high. Yeah. yeah, it might be good for like a boutique whiskey that people wouldn't mind paying a fortune for. All right. So, uh, well, this brings us to the end of another Wild Card Wednesday. But I think we'll be a, back around for uh, Ron DeTerio will be back around for another taste challenge on Fandango Friday. And I have something that I never had before that's very applicable to the holiday. And by that time, I will have some icy cold eggnog for what I'm going to use. Ooh. And right after I sign off, I'm going to run next door to the Catholic Church uh, uh, music rehearsal because I'll be able to catch the second half with the African drum. So right Damn. after I get off, right. ten seconds, boom, right to the church. Okay, that's pretty cool. And uh, well, um, bless Amy. If you're watching, Alex, just to let you know, I would join those. A blessing. Food, I would join the food videos every week, but it's just not a good time point for me. Like if it was at a different time of the day, I would join. It's just eight o'clock. Oh. Look at that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Libby's. <laughs> <laughs> I've had Libby's Vienna sausage, and I think that they do a good job. Um, I, but I just, I would join all, I would have joined all of those, but I just, it's not a good time frame for me. Otherwise, I'd be right there with all of my, because you know what? Preservatives might be preserving you. Now, um, hmm. people don't think about that. Now, uh, anyway, uh, James P. Madonna is going to close us out with a musical um, selection. Any last? But oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Any last? Any last words? Okay, yeah, I was going to ask real quick. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, I just want to tell Thomas Metal we got lots of heavy metal of music is more than welcome on my new Facebook mysticism page. Ooh. New Age mysticism and healing. We got a ton of heavy metal and. Uh, and Ox Blood uh, Forge is uh, more than welcome. Uh, nice. Thank you, sir. Hey, where's the intoxicated uh, women that are supposed to join the show? <laughs> 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 what? Uh, hey, that, I think that mad elf got me buzzed. Anyway, well, no. <laughs> oh. I, I, I did. I did post. Uh, I did post a video tonight of uh, John and Nelly bear mail package that was sent to me. Uh, so, it's interested in seeing uh, some upcoming beers that will be on my channel. Uh, that was posted tonight on my channel from John and Nelly, the guy that's to my far left. Yeah, not politically, but geographically. All right. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, That's funny. Chronologically, I'm the why you're wise guy. <laughs> why? So anyway, anyway, uh, anybody, last call for comments and. If not, we're going to be out of here. Have you, I just want to know, if you revisited the Weissens, Stefaner? I know you did it. Uh, you reviewed it like seven, eight years ago. Have you revisited it? I don't think I have revisited the Weissens, Stefaner, Hefeweiss beer. Weiss. But I would be interested in doing so. 
You know, you know, the German wheat beers tend to be much more flavorful than any of the nationally advertised uh, or domestic wheat beers. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. Very good, very good. 100%. Especially the one that Jay really promoted, that uh, Artissimo, what the hell was that again? Artisano or... Uh, uh, that, that German beer that really tasted fantastic with the wheat beer, um, with the with the interesting name. Uh, what the hell was it? Uh, Artisima. I have to think about that. Yeah, yeah. It was it, well, anyway. The German beer, the German wheat beers are definitely superior uh, in flavor. The instrument, the instrument you played with your mouth there, uh, James C. Madonna. What is that called? It's called it's called the Jew's harp, but it has nothing to do with Israel. Okay. You know, I, I played this in the in the live mic in the church, and the and the guy says, Hey, go easy on that. All the priests and the bishops are hearing you. And I and I started singing, Let me tell you a story about a man named Jay, the poor mountain. He says, Not that. <laughs> oh no. Don't sing that in church, he says. <laughs> so I so I had I had to dummy it up like Archie Bunker used to say, "Dummy it up, me then." Well, what's the name of that church? The uh, Church of the Holy Rosary it was built in 1906. Uh, Jay uh, saw photos of it. It's huge. Yeah, I did. Uh huh. And, and they have a big marble receptacle for holy water that where you can immerse an adult and baptize them. And I told them, "Why don't Why don't you raise tilapia in there?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's time to get off of this. All right. Thanks, folks, for watching this video production. Uh, James, you might want to go drink some coffee before you go over there. It might be a good idea. I'm right. 35 agrees. That's all I care about. He agrees. <laughs> Remember? Well, uh, that's about it. So, thanks, folks. Cheers, Cheers. The Mad Elf.